Hey, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com, and in this video, I'll show you how to use the slides feature from Elementor Pro. So before we dive in, I wanted to just say, if you don't already have Elementor Pro, I highly recommend that you pick it up. And if you want to support my channel by getting it, you can get it at WPWithTom.com slash Elementor. I also wanted to mention that I'll be covering every single one of the Elementor Pro elements in videos and making a big playlist on my channel that I show you how to use each of them with. So if you'd like to see more of those videos, feel free to subscribe. And with that out of the way, let's dive into the slides feature now. So what I'm going to do to start off is I'm just going to add a new section right here and you can either hit the plus icon or you can go over here on the left and just search for slides. And I'm going to just drag the slide in and drop it. And now this feature is in here. So there's some options you see right away. It says slide one, slide two, and slide three. And there's other slider options down here as well. So I'm gonna just make it pause automatically by taking off the autoplay. And I'm gonna do that so you can see the slides feature in full form here on one slide as we edit it. And I'm actually gonna show you, you can actually copy these slides and make duplicate slides. So right now there's two slide ones, now there's three slide ones, and you can see there's more dots being added. So there's slide one, slide one, slide one again, slide two, and then slide three right here. So I'm gonna go and actually delete these. You can do that right here. And I'm gonna just leave two slides. So what we can do here is we can click on where it says slide one heading, and there's gonna be background, content, and style. So you can do a lot with just in this section right here with the background, you can actually change the color so let's just say you wanted to change it to be blue. That's what you would do and you could click update. Now, if we went off the slide and then went back to the slide right here, you can see it's this blue color now for slide one. So you can also change it and add an image. So let's just go and add an image right here. I'm gonna add this one and just click insert media. And right here, you can see that now we have this photo as the background. So we have options that are with the size. We have cover, contain, which is gonna put it in the center, and then our blue background comes to effect behind it. And then we also have auto, which is going to kind of zoom in and make it a larger image. So I'm gonna to go to cover because I think it looks the best in this case. And then we have this Ken Burns effect. Now that's gonna almost just zoom in really slowly. And in this case, it almost looks like the waves are moving. It's kind of a cool effect. So we can see when you really look at it, it almost looks like the waves are moving within this image right in here. And it's a nice effect to have it just slowly zooms in on the photo and that's the classic Ken Burns effect. You can turn that off if you'd like, but that is an option. And then you can also have a background overlay and you can change the color within here to make it look totally different for the overlay of the image if you want. I'm gonna turn that off as well and just leave the image as the default, but that is another option. So I'm gonna go down to slide image two right here, and I'm gonna click on that one to add an image as well. So let's just add this one in, insert media, and there's an image that's supposed to be me. It's the cartoon version of me. And again, you can change the background color on the image if you want, but I by default already have this color as the background for the image. So here you can again put the Ken Burns effect, background overlay, anything you want like that, but let's go into where it says content right here. So this says slide two heading. Let's just say, learn about WordPress. And then I could put some more text in here. Is an example of a WordPress tutorial by Tom from WP with Tom. So that is an example of how you could put some text in here and you're going to see it show up on the screen. Now you see it goes over my face on this image a little bit. We're going to get to that in a second here, but you can also go and do button text. And right now it says click here. You can just put something like learn more. And then you can also link to a page here. So let's say we wanted to link to a specific page here. We can go and just put HTTPS slash forward slash forward slash google.com. And then you can choose if you want this link to open in a new tab, which I often do with links on sites because I want people to keep more time on my page on the site. Or you can actually set it up where you can have a no follow link or have it on the whole slide or the button only 
where the link is applied to. So that's a pretty cool feature to have. I would probably do button only on the button itself rather than the whole page if they click on it, but it's completely up to you for what you want to do for that. So I'm going to go over to where it says style since it's slightly on my face here. Let's go and go to custom yes. And then you can choose how you want the positioning to be. So let's just say we want it to go to the left. Now it looks a lot better than it did by default just by having this text on the left side. You can also rearrange it and put it up to the top. You can go to the bottom. You can go in the center. And then you can also align the text to the left, center, or right depending on what you're trying to do. So I'm going to go and just put it in the center, I guess, in this case. Just for this example, you can also change the content color. So let's say the background color that I had here doesn't look good. Fortunately, it does in this case, but let's just say it's a lighter color. Maybe you'd want to make the text black because it might stand out better or a blue or something like that. I'm going to leave it as white, but I wanted to show you can easily change that text color here as well. And you can also add a text shadow with some blur on as a feature. I don't really like that too much on this. I don't think it stands out enough from my experience. It makes that big difference that I want to have with drawing eyes to these kind of slider images here. So we can also go down and we can go and look at the other slider options. So within here we have options that cover the arrows and dots. So right here are the arrows on the sides. Then there's dots at the bottom, these two dots where you can change from one page to another, the arrows right here. So what you could do in this is you can turn on the autoplay, which is what I turned off at the start, but let's just go and make it arrows only. I would prefer that in my case. You can also change the transition. So let's make it fade and make the transition speed 2,500 milliseconds, which is equal to two and a half seconds. I'm going to turn on autoplay for now. So what I'm going to do is just hit next here and you can see it transitions nice and slowly right into the next image. So let's just see it fades and you can still see the tree there because of the way the fade goes. You can see it goes one to the next and it just fades in. I kind of like that fading effect that it gives and you can do that and have that fade go into effect when you up this to something like two and a half seconds. You can also choose how the content comes in. See it's sliding up right now. You can have it slide down as well and you'll see it slides down from the top at this point. And you can choose that based on what you want right here. Make it slide up, down. You can have none, right, left, or zoom. Zoom is another one I should show you right here. It's going to come from far out and zoom right in up close. That could get more attention to your viewer from your viewer if that's what you're going for. I'm going to just have it go down in this case. And I'm going to update these changes as I've made right here. Another thing that you can do is if you wanted to, you can go to where it says style. And right here, you can choose the content width. So I'm actually going to go back here and turn off the autoplay for now. And then I'll go into where it says style. So within the style content width area, you can choose how wide this content is displayed. It probably would come into play more with this one over here, since it is a bit of a interesting image where I'm off to the right, pointing to the left where the text is. So what if I wanted to make this text wider? I can make it maybe 100 and it goes much wider, or you can make it shorter, and you're going to see it more here when I make it shorter, that it's going to be all the way over here, and you can really smush it up or make it wide. If I had more text, it would come over here all the way. So it's something to be aware of when you go to the content width for the text. It really can affect what it looks like overall. By default, it's at 66. Again, if I had more text, this would stretch out even further. So you can also add padding. So let's just say we wanted to add some padding to the left. I'm not going to link all the values, but let's just say I wanted to add 20 pixels to the left. That's how I could do that. I could get it off the edge a little bit so you can see this arrow a little bit better. Maybe I would have it 70 or so. And you can really line it up to be exactly where you want. But then again, this can also change depending on the device you have. So you want to check these in tablet and mobile as well as desktop view. So from here, we can go down to where it says title, description, button, and then also navigation. So within the title and description, it's going to change the spacing between the elements. So right now it's on zero. Let's just make this larger. And you can see that the title is much higher up than the rest of the description. And from here, you can also change the text color as well. And you can change the typography if you want as well right here and just change what it looks like overall, change the sizing of it. So there's a lot that you can do here. I'm actually going to make this spacing go back down. Maybe I'll have it something like 20, I think would look pretty good. Maybe even like 25. 
and just have that nice space between it. The description is also going to change the spacing between the description text right here and this button. And then if you want it to, you can make this smaller. I'm going to make it around 25 again, and I'll go to button text. And here in the button, you're going to be able to change the size of the actual button. So it says medium right now. If we go back, we can see that now the image is going to have a little bit bigger button, but let's go to extra large. You can see it's extra large right here already. And we can see on this page what extra large looks like for the button. So I would recommend either making the button right here small or medium in most cases. Again, you can change the text color, typography, the border width. You can do a lot within these sections. I'm going to go down to where it says navigation. So right now the arrows are on the inside. You can actually place them on the outside as well. But if you do that, you probably want to make the arrow color something visible like that. So now you have this black arrows on the outside and people aren't going to accidentally click on the image. So if you had your whole image clickable as that link, that's where this could come into play because if someone clicks this, but they really wanted to click on the arrow that's inside a link, they might go to a link that they don't actually want to go to. So that's something you should be aware of. And I like to have it on the outside personally here. So something I also wanted to show you was if we go up to the top and we right click right here and we go to where it says edit section, we can then change the layout for it. So right now it's not full width. You see right down here, this is a full width layout, but up here it is not right in this section. So if we wanted to, you can go to where it says stretch section and you also can change the box to be full width and that should make the stretch go into effect. Let's just click update right here and then I'll click preview changes. And you can see that now it is full width with our text on the page here. Looks a little bit different because it's stretched so far, but that gives you this option to have it be a full width slider in this case. So I hope this was helpful in showing you how to make that feature go into effect. And that about wraps up the Elementor Pro Slides widget. So as you can see, this widget packs a punch with lots of flexibility and features. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Elementor tutorials. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks for viewing and have a wonderful day.